Hi everyone, this lesson is on the signs and symptoms of esophageal cancer. If you want more information on how this condition is actually diagnosed and treated, please check out my full lesson on esophageal cancer. Let's first talk about what esophageal cancer is and then we'll get into the signs and symptoms. So esophageal cancer is a cancer or a carcinoma of the esophagus. There are actually two types or two main types of esophageal cancer. One of them is squamous cell carcinoma and the other one is adenocarcinoma. There are particular risk factors for getting esophageal cancer. Some of these include gastroesophageal reflux disease or GERD, alcohol consumption, smoking, and obesity, along with some other ones. If you want more information, again, please check out my full lesson on this topic. Now, esophageal cancer is more likely to occur in male patients. In fact, male patients are going to be affected roughly three times as much as female patients. The onset of esophageal cancer is going to occur later in life. Oftentimes, the onset is going to be between the ages of 55 to 60 years of age. And when an individual does get diagnosed with esophageal cancer, it has a very poor prognosis with low survival rates. Now, the topic of this lesson is that esophageal cancer can cause a variety of signs and symptoms. We're going to talk about those symptoms and why they occur in the next upcoming slides. So by far, the main and most important symptom that's going to occur in esophageal cancer is dysphagia. So dysphagia is difficulty swallowing. This dysphagia is going to be progressive in nature, which means that it's going to start off being very mild and it's going to worsen over time. It's going to be progressive. So the characteristic of this progressive dysphagia is that it's going to start with solids, meaning that if a patient swallow something solid. They have a difficult time swallowing that. And then over time, as this dysphagia gets worse, it's going to affect both solids and liquids. So first, you're going to have a hard time swallowing solid foods, and then you're going to have a hard time swallowing solids and even liquids. So even when you drink something, you're going to have a hard time swallowing that. So this is progressive dysphagia. And this dysphagia is due to a cancerous growth within the esophagus. So you can imagine that if there's some growth in the esophagus and it's growing and getting larger, it's going to get more and more difficult to get food and liquids past that obstruction. Another important symptom to make note of with esophageal cancer is odynophagia. So odynophagia is painful swallowing. So this is going to be different than dysphagia. Dysphagia is feeling of difficulty swallowing or getting things stuck, but odynophagia is going to be a pain when you swallow. And what is going to be noted is that as the condition worsens, the pain will not only occur with swallowing, but it's going to become constant. So there'll just be a constant pain in the area where the esophagus is going to be located. And we're going to talk a bit more about this later on as well. We can also see regurgitation occurring. So regurgitation is coughing up food. Oftentimes it's going to be digested food, although it could be undigested food. So it could or part of it could reach the stomach, be slightly digested and then coughed up, or it might not even reach the stomach and may be coughed up as undigested food. Along with this regurgitation, we can see aspiration. So aspiration is sucking things into the airways. So aspirating particles of food into the airways can occur. And this may lead to aspiration pneumonia. So if there is things getting caught in the esophagus and they get coughed up, some of them can enter into the trachea and get into the lungs and that food particle can cause an infection to occur. It can seed an infection. So this can lead to what we call aspiration pneumonia. So the aspiration pneumonia is an infection of the lungs. We can also see coughing occurring with esophageal cancer. This is going to be a chronic cough. So it's going to be persistent. It can last for many, many months. It's most often going to be non-productive, although it could be productive in the case of an ammonia. And the reason we see cough is due to a concurrent gastroesophageal reflux disease, which we mentioned as an important risk factor for getting esophageal cancer. So having GERD, having acid reflux can cause coughing, can cause a chronic non-productive cough, or it can be due to that aspiration pneumonia we just mentioned. So if you're aspirating food into the airways, you can cause an ammonia, a lung infection, which can also cause a cough as well. And this coughing may also be due to a fistula forming. So a fistula can form between the esophagus and the trachea. So a fistula can form anytime there's chronic inflammation in a particular area of the body. A fistula is a connection or a tunnel between two epithelialized surfaces. So what that means is that a fistula can form and connect between the esophagus and the trachea, it can become an esophagotracheal fistula. So again, the reason is because there's going to be chronic inflammation in the esophagus from a cancer or cancer's growth in the esophagus. So we can see a fistula form between the esophagus and the trachea, and food particles can move between the esophagus to the trachea, and then that can cause the patient to cough. So that's another reason why we may see a cough in esophageal cancer. 
And we can also see hoarseness occurring. Hoarseness is going to be difficulty talking, so a harsh, rough voice. And then we can also see wheezing occur as well, oftentimes due to what we've mentioned before. Aspiration pneumonia, food particles getting into the airways either by aspiration or by an esophageal tracheal fistula. So this can also occur as well. And then chest pain can also occur. It's often going to be a retrosternal chest pain, and it may also be in the location of the epigastric area. So it may be an epigastric pain as well. And then another important sign of esophageal cancer is bleeding. And this can be an important sign of other gastrointestinal cancers as well. So what we can note with esophageal cancer is hematochesia. So hematochesia is going to be bright red blood in the stool. This is not going to be the case most commonly. It's going to occur if there is a brisk bleed, a very quick bleed that doesn't allow time for digestion of the blood. So this could occur, but we're most often going to see melina. So melina is going to be a sign of an upper gastrointestinal bleed. So melina is a dark, tarry, smelly stool. So again, we can see most often melina occurring from esophageal cancer because it most likely could cause a slow bleed. And what happens is that slow bleed, that blood will get digested in the gastrointestinal system and then will come out as a black, tarry, smelly stool, which we call melina. Now, if that cancer's growth is causing a lot of inflammation and some bleeding, it can also lead to hematemesis. Hematemesis is vomiting up blood. So the hematemesis itself could be red in coloration, but it can also be what we call coffee ground emesis. This is where some blood gets into the stomach, gets partially digested, and then gets vomited up, and it looks like coffee grounds. So we can also see this occurring with esophageal cancer. And because we're getting bleeds, and we're getting chronic bleeds, we can see anemia. So anemia is going to be a low red blood count. It's going to be due to blood losses from hematochesia, melina, occult bleeding. Occult bleeding is a bleed that is not recognized. And we can also get it from hematemesis as well. And this slow bleed is going to lead to iron deficiency. And then oftentimes it's important to rule out other causes as well. And then due to this iron deficiency anemia, we can see signs and symptoms of iron deficiency anemia. So if you want more information on the signs and symptoms of iron deficiency anemia, please check my full lesson on this topic. But some of them are going to include fatigue, pallor, and having issues with shortness of breath. So some of those are going to be some of the signs and symptoms of iron deficiency anemia. And some of the more important findings that can be found in other types of cancer include the constitutional symptoms. So the constitutional symptoms are going to be fatigue. So fatigue is going to be common with many cancers, including esophageal cancer. Night sweats. So these night sweats are going to oftentimes be drenching night sweats. And what's often taught is that these night sweats are so severe that oftentimes you have to change the bedding. And then weight loss. Weight loss is also going to be another important finding. And this is going to be an unexplained significant weight loss. And this is actually going to be the second most common finding in esophageal cancer. So we talked about dysphagia, that's going to be the most common finding, but weight loss is actually the second most common finding. And you might be wondering why that is. And the reason is, is because of dysphagia and tumor-related anorexia. So you can imagine that if you're having difficulty swallowing both solids and liquids, you're going to not eat as often. If you have pain when you're swallowing, you're not going to eat as often. And then the tumor itself can lead to anorexia. It's going to cause the patient to not want to eat as well. So this is going to be an important finding in esophageal cancer. So again, it's going to be an unexplained and significant weight loss. And then before I move on, I want to also talk about the fact that we can also see signs and symptoms of gastroesophageal reflux disease. This is going to be one of the most important risk factors for having or getting esophageal cancer in the future. So these are going to be important signs and symptoms, especially if you've had these signs and symptoms for a very long period of time. And then you have a lot of these other signs and symptoms we talked about earlier on in this lesson. So one of them is going to be heartburn. This is going to be the classic hallmark finding of gastroesophageal reflux disease. So it's a retrosternal burning sensation, and it's due to inappropriate opening of the lower esophageal sphincter. The lower esophageal sphincter is right here, and that is where the esophagus connects to the stomach. It's closed when not eating because you don't want this acidic content to reflux back up into the esophagus to burn the esophagus. So if it's opening inappropriately for long periods of time, that acidic gastric content can reflux up into the esophagus and burn the esophagus. So this is going to be a finding with GERD. Another finding is water brash. So that again is excessive salivation. It's a production of excessive amounts of saliva. And it's often going to be due to the reflux of stomach acid. So there may be some stomach acids that get into the mouth and induce the production of saliva. 
It's going to leave a bad taste in the mouth. Oftentimes it's going to be an acidic taste. And then belching can also be an issue in GERD. And you're more likely to belch more often with GERD because of inappropriate lower esophageal sphincter opening. So these are a few of the common signs and symptoms of GERD, but some of the previous signs and symptoms we talked about earlier on in this lesson can also occur with GERD, and one of them is going to be that chronic cough we talked about before. So again, very important to think about these as well, as GERD is a very important risk factor for getting esophageal cancer. If you want more information on esophageal cancer, including more risk factors, the pathophysiology, how it's diagnosed and treated, please check out my full lesson on this topic. And if you haven't already, please like and subscribe for more lessons like this one. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope to see you next time.